This is called Near My God to Thee. Let's sing it together. Near My God to Thee. Tonight's message I've entitled Something New. You know, when do you know that something new is needed? Uh, you know, for instance, uh, you know, we might see that something is new uh, is needed when something isn't working, right? You want to uh, maybe uh, it's an, a dishwasher or something that stopped working, uh, or, or you see that. Uh, something's just not working. Something's not functioning properly. When do you uh, notice that something new is needed? Now, I recently purchased a, a new guitar. I had a need for another uh, a backup guitar in case I broke a string while performing with the other guitar. Uh, you know, it'd be easier if I had one there, a backup guitar that I could just pick up and, and continue to play. Uh, you know, there's a difference between a need and a desire, isn't there? You know, some will buy something new just because they desire to have it. You know, children, for instance, when uh, you take them into a store and they walk around and uh, perhaps they, they see a toy or, or something that they, they really want, they, they desire it, uh, they'll often ask to, to if, if you will buy it for them. You know, they have a desire for something new. But there are instances where uh, the need is great, uh, where, where there is a need uh, for something new because the old isn't working properly. You know, often I think of, uh, of people who, who are in a bad situation, right? And, and they, they want a new way of living. They want a, a new way uh, uh, to live their life. Uh, because the old, what they're doing presently isn't working. Uh, you know, perhaps, you know, uh, you might have had a car in the past, and an old car, it stops working. It, it no longer has the power needed to, to get you from uh, point A to point B. And so, uh, you, you purchased another. You know, uh, maybe it wasn't brand new off the lot, but it was new to you. 
And the Bible tells us that there was a need to bring in the new. And, it, and it's so uh, uh, interesting. You know, we see in our Bibles there, don't we? The, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Covenant and the New Covenant. And, and I want to talk just a little bit about that tonight. About, uh, about this need. This need to bring in the new. You know, uh, uh, with the law, the, uh, the Old Testament, uh, uh, with the, the uh, old Mosaic law, the law, uh, it would condemn. That's all it could do. It could condemn, and it could make a person conscious of sin. You know, here's the law, right? Uh, thou shall not, thou shall not. And then when you look at it, you saw that you, fall, you fell short, right? Uh, the law could condemn. It could make a person conscious of sin, but it was powerless to, to bring about righteousness because of the sin in the flesh. And so the Bible tells us in Romans, it tells us that uh, God sent his son. God sent his son. It says what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh. It was weakened by the sinful state of human beings. Uh, uh, we broke the law time and time again. God did something. He, God brought power by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemns sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. See, the law focused on a righteousness, a standard, but that no one could, could reach or, or keep it. Every man, woman, boy and girl born into the world fell under the umbrella of sin, all under the power of sin. And the law was powerless, the Bible explains, to bring a remedy to make one righteous. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We're born into sin. We were under its power, born under the law. We stood condemned, condemned to die apart from God. We lived in a different realm, a realm the Bible calls the realm of the flesh, the sinful state of human beings, a power in opposition to the spirit. We were slaves to sin. When you were slaves to, to sin, the Bible says, when you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. Our master, you see, was sin. Our master was sin. It ruled and controlled us. We did its bidding. We succumbed to its demands. We sought to please our master, sin. Sin increased, the Bible tells us. And therefore the law, the law was brought in so that sin increased. And yet sin reigned in death. Now if all humanity are slaves to sin, and under its power, and if the law cannot make them right and bring them righteousness, then something new must be done to save humanity. The Bible tells us something was done. That at just the right time, when we are still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Our old self, that sin nature, our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with. That is, rendered powerless that that used to have power over us that used to control us our old self that sin nature was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with rendered powerless that we should no longer be slaves to sin and so who is this one who is this one that took my place who took my sins 
that which had power over me and willingly placed himself on the cross, dying for my sins so that I could live a life that is free, that I could be set free. This is the one I want to know. How many out there are desperately wanting change? They want a new way to live. They want a fresh start. They want a new hope. You know, so many are dying, dying without change, dying without new life, dying without a fresh start, dying without hope. Dear friends, we are his messengers, the carriers of good news. We have been released. We have been pardoned. We have heard and received God's news, God's abundant provision of grace and his gift of righteousness. How many are out there who are burdened with a loaded conscience, weighed down by their sins and powerless to come out from under the cumbersome load. They have not looked at the cross to see Christ. They are trapped by their past and present shame. They have not heard or understood God's mercy, grace, and forgiveness. They are under the law. They feel the weight of their guilt. As the Bible states in John chapter 3, verses 17 and 18, that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. You see, God's righteousness is a gift righteousness that comes by faith the law brings wrath righteousness is given it is not earned righteousness is given through faith in jesus christ to all who believe it is credited to our account god will credit righteousness for us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. This is the work of the gospel. It is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. In the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith. This is what the message was about on Sunday, atonement, the perfect sacrifice. That God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement and through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. This is the righteousness of God revealed. For in the next verse it states, God did this to demonstrate his righteousness. A righteousness that is given to us who believe. God did this. He sent his son to die on the cross through the shedding of his blood an atonement made for you and me to, to cleanse us. Before the Lord, we stand clean, clean from all of our sins. You see, God is just. And believers are justified by faith in Jesus. And since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. We are no longer under the law. We are not under the law, but under grace. You died to the law through the body of Christ that you might belong to another, to him who was raised from the dead, in order that we might bear fruit for God. What kind of fruit are we bearing? There's old fruit, 
fruit that is rotten and spoiled. That's the kind of fruit we used to bear. Rotten fruit, spoiled fruit. The Bible tells us for when we were in the realm of the flesh, the sinful state of human beings, a power in opposition to the spirit, the sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in us so that we bore fruit for death. But now, by dying to what once bound us, we have been released from the law so that we serve in the new way of the Spirit and not in the old way of the written code. Have you discovered and are you discovering what this new way of living is all about? Serving in the new way of the Spirit. Are you discovering that? The freedom that Christ has given. Living in grace. and We are credited righteousness and peace with God. All the riches of His abundant grace. And as the song that we opened up with. Draw near, near, near. Near, near my God to thee. The Bible tells us, draw near and he will draw near to you. And so as I was uh, putting together this message here, the Lord was speaking to me about when we uh, open the word, you know, we are looking at the heart of God. We are looking at the heart of God. And when he sent his son, uh, he did so because he so loved us, that he so loved the world, that he sent his son. When we open up the pages of scripture, we're not doing it as a, a legalistic, as, as, as uh, a checklist, uh, just to be checked off. No, we are doing it to draw close to God. Draw near and he will draw near to you. We are, we are looking at the heart of God. How many times have you heard the Bible as a, as a love letter, a love letter written for you and for me. And so when we look at these things, when we maybe look at some of these big words, I know that the Bible uses these uh, uh, words that uh, were used like in a court of law with like justification and uh, purification and sanctification, all these big words and atonement. And, and we look at it and, and uh, I'm really trying to break it down. Uh, you know, uh, you know, it seems like, and some of the letters written, and even even Peter said that about Paul. You remember that some of some things that Paul write were were difficult to understand. Do you remember Peter saying that? But I believe if we spend time, if we keep on getting familiar with the Word, we get uh, involved, we draw near, and we look at the heart of God. You know, just think of that. That that God sent His Son because He so loved. And so when we, we look at the scriptures, we're drawing near, we're looking at the heart of God. And just see that he loved you so much that he gave his one and only son to pay for our sins, that atonement. All right, so that we can be justified, that we can be made right, right relationship with God. And so I hope that as we go over some of these things, that we'll begin to have a better understanding. I believe as, as we go uh, over uh, uh, some of these passages of Scripture, that when we might not first understand it, when we continue to review it, I pray that uh, the Lord will open up our hearts and minds, that we'll be able to see the love that He has for us. We'll begin to understand some of these things. Again, I... Uh, I go back to that verse there. By dying to what once bound us, we have been released from the law so that we serve in the new way of the Spirit and not in the old way of the written code. Think about all those who uh, do want a new way of living. They're tired of the old way. They're sick and tired of, of living, in, whether it be in drugs or alcohol or, or in bad relationships or bad decisions, whatever it might be, and they they want a new way. Oh, we're carriers. We're 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 uh, messengers to carry the message. There is a new way, 
a new way has been made. Amen. That we can serve in the new way of the Spirit and not in the old way of the written code. Dear friends, I, I pray that this message has been a blessing to you and that, uh, uh, you know, we will have this, this hunger and thirst for righteousness to continue to open up his word and, and look at the heart of God. Oh, he wants us to draw near. We draw near and he will draw near to us. I pray that you have a good rest of the week. You should be blessed. Until next time, amen. Bye-bye.